Good morning. A very happy Christmas to you on this Christmas day. How lovely it is to be celebrating this day together. It wouldn't be the same if you were not here. So thank you for being here. And welcome to those tuning in at home. A very happy Christmas to you too. Let's have a moment of quiet as we just rejoice quietly within our own hearts and minds of the birth of the Christ child. Loving God, we thank you for this oh so special day. We thank you for the gift of your precious son, Jesus Christ, born to Mary and Joseph, born of you, Lord. We thank you for this day and we offer you our worship together, Lord. Amen. We're now going to have the lighting of our Advent candles, so I invite Lynn and Roy up to come and lead us in that, please. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Jesus is the light of the world, the light no darkness can ever put out. We're now we're going to sing the Advent candles, tell their story. Amen. Isn't it lovely to be able to light that white central candle? We sing, we sing, O come all ye faithful. Let's join together in worship.
when I was having my second cup of tea this morning early, the words came to me, with gladness we worship, rejoice as we sing. So our prayers this Christmas day. Heavenly Father, we come once again with our thanks and praise, the privilege of being able to join together in worship and to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus, our Saviour. All the truth, majesty and creativity of a loving and faithful God came down at Christmas, poured into a tiny heart, making a quiet entrance in a dark manger. The greatest gift ever given. Not a beautiful package under a decorated tree, but your gift to us came wrapped in flesh of baby Jesus. The gift of hope and placed in a manger. A gift to all who would receive. This gift would later be rewrapped in the scars of our sin nailed to the cross on Calvary because of your love. And so we come and bow in adoration. May you and you alone be glorified this morning, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And now we come with our prayers for confession. And this morning, I invite you to have your eyes open while we do this. It's an all aid prayer, so I invite you to join in. But we're going to do some hand motion. First of all, I invite you to clench your fist. And this is the anger that sometimes we have with one another. And then the index finger, when we point and blame others. We see the wrong in them without recognizing our own. And then your hand close to your chest. Sorry for the things that we keep for ourselves and fail to share with others who may be in need. Hand to mouth. Sorry for the foolish words we have spoken which may have hurt others. Hands over our eyes. We have chosen not to see the good things we could have done. Hand over one ear. I think it's one ear because you won't be here what I say if you put, it, put your hands on both ears. We fail to listen to the cries of the poor or those who suffer injustice. And the same hand opened with palm upwards to receive as though you're going to receive something. And so we bring all that we are this morning to Jesus, our sins and our failure to love. And so we can celebrate the forgiveness that Jesus offers when we truly say how sorry we are. So let's just pause for a moment if we think about those actions that we've taken. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we can join together and sing in Singing the Faith 196. Come and join the celebration.
There's a new king born today. Marilyn, thank you for the lovely ways in which you led those prayers. I love the hand prayers. Thank you so much. Today is a day of celebration. We know for some, today is not an easy day as well, though. We know we're not able to be with some of our friends and family because of COVID, because of various other things as well. But we remember them in our hearts and minds today. I wonder if any of you have had the opportunity this morning yet to have a peek at any present given. Oh, Dorothy, I thought you might have done. Dorothy, have you brought anything to bring and share? Go on then. If you would like to. Okay, do you want to come up to the front to show us it? Just mind the step. It looks edible, I folks. I was running the suns quickly, and I was most surprised it was cold. And I thought, where's, oh, where's this been? Homemade lemon curd off Exeter Christmas Market, Whoa. all the way from Devon. And Excellent. I haven't had any lemon curd for a long time. Wow. So I'm very overjoyed with that. Bless you, that is lovely, just to enjoy From my dear that. son. Well done, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassing him now. <laughs> Anybody else bring and share? Now's your opportunity. How many of us are looking at our feet? <laughs> I think one of my gifts this morning was breakfast in bed. I know, I know. It doesn't happen all the time, maybe once a year. But thank you to my lovely Dave for breakfast in bed this morning as we opened our stockings together. But we know what the real gift of Christmas is. We know it's God incarnation. God stepped into the world as a tiny baby. So now we're going to hear from scripture about when God gave his very son the greatest gift of all. I'm reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the hi highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Thank you, Anne, for bringing us that reading this Christmas morning. We hear of the shepherds, a common people, the workers, the practical folk who knew how to do things outside. They were the ones in touch with winter and summer, the wind, the rain and the sun. They knew the hard mysteries of birthing and dying, the toughness and the realities of life. Yet on this day, God chose them the ordinary folk, the common folk, the workers, to send his angel with the news of great joy. But not just one angel, a whole heavenly host. On this day, they were the ones filled with awe and with fear. They were the ones who were the one of the some of the first to see the Son of God face to face. They were the ones who experienced the first Christmas. And then they went and they told others. They became the first preachers of the word. For how could they keep quiet after such an event had happened? Let's now hear about the wise men in our talking nativity. So then, the, king, the kings decided to follow a star. Yep. I wonder what, if they knew which star then. Was the only one star in the sky? Well, there's, there's a lot of stars really, isn't there? So You're right though. They must have known which one to follow. How did they know though? Well, it would be really bright, wasn't it? It was really bright. So yeah. that was a good clue for them. Yeah, I suppose so. You know. I mean, they've got now sat navs, and it would be really hard to follow a star. I could imagine, because stars are millions of miles away. Where did they think they were going? Well, you know, if you follow a star, it's like a rainbow, isn't it? It's, it's you know, if you've got a rainbow, they always say there's something at the end of this rainbow. So mm. with the star, there was going to be something really exciting there when they got there. Hmm. I wonder if anybody else knew about this star then, other than them? I don't think so. They'd have to do it at night, wouldn't they? Yeah. When the stars was out. Well, yeah, because obviously in the day, I mean, they, they have to sleep as well. So they could easily lose the star. If they started following the star, then had a nap and woke up and it was daylight, they wouldn't see no stars. That's true. So they'd have to wait until it got dark again to find the star again to go further. There'd be mountains, deserts, trees, and it might cover the view of the stars. Hmm. It could get cloudy. There could be a lot of things. And you've got to think about what they were following the star on. They were on camels. That's right. Well, that's right, and it would take... Oh. Yeah, because you don't know how far away it was. You've got now a sat nav, have you? No. It's not like having a car, is it? And getting in the car and following the star. You... Well, it's such a long journey, isn't it? And... They had to park the camels up somewhere. You're right there. for the night. Three big camels, where are they going to put them? When you say they've got to park them up, it's not like parking a car, is it? They've got to find somewhere where the camels can have something to eat and drink or whatever to be able to carry on. Mm. 
they'd have to stop and sleep overnight in these little places to rest. It's hard to believe, really, isn't it? After Amazing. all that travelling, they turn up at the wrong place. Well, why did they turn up at the wrong place? But, you see, Herod wanted to know about this new king, I would imagine, because he was feeling a bit threatened by this new king. What do you think? Yeah, I could imagine they were so disappointed with it all. Mm. The whole lot thinking, what a waste of time we arrive in here at the wrong place. We shouldn't be here. And these men, they were supposed to be wise men. They knew what they were supposed to be looking for. So which way did they go then? Well, nobody knew. Well, they went back to finding the star again. They must have done, because there was no other way but that star. And was they going the right way then? They do get to where they're going. And I think they was quite shocked when they got to where they were going, because it wasn't a big palace, what they was expecting for a new king. It was just like a shed. Yeah. You know, what you'd have in your garden. A shed? And someone let them use their stable. It was a stable where they kept all the cattle and the, and the sheep. My word. I bet they couldn't believe that. Well, you would have thought so. You, you know, what do you believe when you see this baby laid in a manger on straw and this is a new king? How did they believe that? What do you believe? Who do you believe? This year, many clergy women have been gifted with new clergy wear when m and brought out their new Christmas jumper. It, gives, it has given us, as clergy women, a new platform, a new way of spreading the good news about the birth of Jesus Christ and about what and who we believe in. Hashtag Team Believe soon started to evolve over the internet. Clergy women of all different denominations starting posted, starting posted pic, post, sorry, starting posting pictures of themselves wearing their Believe jumpers on social media. And soon the newspapers got word of this and started writing articles about these women and their jumpers and why they were wearing them. Unbeknown to me. I appeared in an article in the Guardian website, my children, and I thought it was hilarious. And then over 400 of us appeared in a collage wearing these jumpers. It's a bit like Find Wally. I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> Some of the clergy women then went on to create short film clips about what it is and who it is they believe in. And I want to offer you one this morning because I couldn't put it any better than she has. And as you listen, perhaps you could reflect on what and who you believe in this Christmas day. I believe in God who takes us by the hand and whispers, come with me, let's do life together. This is going to be so good. I believe in God who is there in the twinkling of the stars that shine through the night sky and in the twinkling of our Christmas lights, who sparkles in the tinsel and is reflected back at us in the face we see in the baubles on our Christmas trees. I believe in God who came to us at Christmas as the tiny, cherished, vulnerable Christ child and who has nestled his way into our hearts and minds, giving us room to breathe and space to grow in him. I believe in God who shows us how to love one another, safe and secure in the knowledge that we ourselves are fully loved and fully known and are precious in God's sight. I believe in God who believes that fairness and equality should be and can be for each and every one of us, who knows that the gifts of grace and mercy are ones that we can repackage into words of love and truth. I believe in God who is there in every messy, grieving, broken heart and situation, who comforts us when we mourn, 
and gives us strength and hope. I believe in God who reframes all our doubts and uncertainties into the belief that we do matter, who delves into every forgotten part of societies, reaches in and reflects light and love to all that was lost and stagnant. I believe in God who believes that we can make a difference, who calls our attention to situations where justice is not yet seen and trusts us to bring about that change. I believe in God who reminds us daily that in Jesus we have our saviour and our redeemer, who brings healing, who brings restoration and reminds us that there is life even after death. I believe in God who teaches our hearts to sing the joy of an eternal nativity, who promises that hope is never wasted and that our souls can find their rest in Christ. I believe in God who takes us by the hand and whispers, come with me, let's do life together. This is going to be so good. If you were asked today, what is it that you believe on this Christmas day? What would your response be? Sometimes we are asked about our belief in the most unexpected ways. I was asked yesterday in the endoscopy suite by the nurse when she found out who I was and what I did. And she told me she was an atheist. And I said, God bless you anyway, and she thanked me. She told me what she believed in history and science, and I said, I believe history and science and God too. They can all go together. And I prayed with her and blessed her. I pray that each of you would be able to say who you believe in this day. Amen. We now have a poem. And did it happen? A poem called And Did It Happen, followed by prayer. And did it happen that in a stable long ago, a weary couple who no one wanted to know should choose a manger in spite of the danger to hold and hello the Lord below. And did it happen that in the stillness of the night the woman laboured to let God see the light and bathed and dressed him, breastfed and blessed him, the world incarnate whose time was right. And did it happen? The news of this first reached the poor. Compelled by angels to tiptoe to the door and see no trappings just linen wrappings, a baby for certain, and God for sure. And did it happen that all of this was meant to be, that God from distance should choose to be set free and show uniqueness, transformed in weakness, that I might touch him and he touch me. Now let us pray. Touch each one of us, dear Lord, in this precious moment of love. Transform our weaknesses 
set us free from all that burdens us. And make us new again, once more this Christmas, and always. Amen. So now we come to our time of prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. Let us pray. Living God, born to us this day in a stable all forlorn, we thank you for the great message of the gospel, the glad tidings of your love, the good news of your coming to our world through your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that the message may inspire us again this Christmas time and in the days to come. We thank you that the good news of Christ has challenged people across the ages, that though it has been proclaimed so many times, that though we have heard it ourselves so many times before, it continues to be news for us and news for all. We pray for those you have specifically called to proclaim the good news. Ministers. Thinking of our, of our own Minister Debbie, our Superintendent Stuart, Deacon Dave, and all our supernumerary ministers. For local preachers and worship leaders, evangelists, youth workers, family coordinators and teachers, and all those with a special gift and responsibility of communicating your word. Grant them wisdom, direction, inspiration and courage, that they may faithfully witness to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for those for whom today is a working day, thinking especially of those working in our hospitals, the police, the fire, the ambulance, and the military. We think of the care workers that have to work today, lifeboat and other rescue volunteers, and all those who are helping to keep our country running today. We pray for all those who have closed their minds to what you would say to them. May your love break through the barriers that they erect. For those who have heard but failed to understand, may their hearts be open to the truth. For all those who have yet to grasp that the gospel is good news for them, May the experiencing, experience of meeting Christ transform their lives. For all those who have responded and come to faith, may their knowledge of you continue to grow. And we pray for those longing for good news, who cry out for glad tidings, those seeking, seeking peace from the violence of this world, those suffering from COVID, whose Christmas has been devastated by the viral infection. For the poor, the starving, the sick and lonely. For those undergoing tests and awaiting results. For the oppressed, persecuted, unloved and the bereaved. Those for whom there is no Christmas this year. And for the many people across the world who despair of ever see seeing hope rekindled. 
Lord, on all those for whom we've prayed, we ask for your wholeness and healing. We bring before you our young people, thinking of the energy, enthusiasm and potential that they have. We pray that the obstacles that can hold them back, such as poverty, ill health and discrimination, will be removed. That your spirit will inspire our young people to have the courage to speak out for justice, find solutions to poverty and love their neighbours with words and actions. Strengthen them with joyful hearts, Lord. Give them a vision of your kingdom here on earth and the voice to speak to their friends about you. Loving God, as you come again into your world this Christmas time through your word, your Holy Spirit, your people and the living presence of Christ, may the message of the gospel truly be good news for all people and may your word of love move in the hearts of all who hear it. We ask this, our prayer of intercession, in and through the name of the one who became our Lord and Saviour, and who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, we've had a wonderful service this morning, and I thank everybody who's taken part. Those who've taken part, thank you very much. We're going to close our service this morning uh, with number 214 from Singing the Faith, once in Royal David City. Thank you.
May our God, who sent his Son to be next to each one of us, and may the Son who was born for us be with us. May the Spirit who gives us hope dwell deep within us. Amen. Amen. Go have fun and celebrate. Happy Christmas to you all.